Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy. Hey guys, so today we are bringing you the second biggest camera comparison of possibly the year, and that is the iPhone 8 Plus versus the Galaxy Note 8. Now, the reason why I say it's the second biggest is because probably the biggest one, depending on your preference, is going to either between the Note 8 and the Pixel XL 2 for Android users, and going to be the Note 8 versus the iPhone X to see which one on the side you want to go on. Now, I will say this from the get-go, there will be no ties. So I know a lot of reviewers often say this like, oh, well, it's up to you. No, there will be no ties. There will be a definitive winner. And we also uh, upgraded our categories since this is a bigger comparison between four categories to now six categories for this phone and obviously we're going to do that depending if it fits for the right phone. So one big thing that Apple made a huge deal about uh, with their announcement was the fact that they have a much better HDR. Same thing with Pixel 2. So I think we're going to add this to a new category. So we're going to have HDR and explain what HDR is and what it means and how it's going to give you better photos. The second thing we added is the blur effect shot. Since it's becoming more and more about portrait modes, uh, lens blur, and all this different kind of stuff that we're getting from different phones, we are going to include that as well. Now, for this one, since the iPhone 8 Plus does not have a selfie lens blur, we are not including the selfie lens blur that the Note 8 can do, and the iPhone can't, because that would be unfair, so we are sticking to the rear camera with it. All right, that being said, let's get to the competition, starting off with HDR. Now, HDR is very interesting with these two. Now, if you have seen other reviews and comparisons with the photos, you know that Apple took a very interesting turn this year with the image processor on the iPhone 8. If you compare the iPhone 7 to the iPhone 8, the iPhone 7 actually had more realistic colors. Apple this time punched up the colors and some people will like that, some people will like the and miss the ultra realistic colors of the iPhone 7. So just to warn you because we're going to see that a lot in a lot of these photos. That being said, let's look into this one. Overall, this one's a very interesting comparison to be honest because the blues are much deeper on the Note 8 up here, but if you look to the iPhone, it does have a more dynamic on the lower set of the blue where the clouds are. So on this side of the clouds, you can see a much uh, difference in colors, whereas on here it's kind of faded out. Now, this was taken a few seconds apart, so clouds did move, because uh, at first I was wondering about this area that it was completely unclear, whereas you can see clouds, especially if we zoom in, um, overall with this photo. so. Overall though, I think um, with the clarity difference, I do think that the clouds look clearer on the note when I zoom in, but at the same time that could just be because of the contrast difference in the much darker blue versus the much lighter blue. Now, it, the funny enough, it is gonna be the same thing uh, when we go down to the green right here. So this is a little bit more uh, faded uh, in green, and this one takes a lot of not only the green, but the yellow from the sun on this shot. So as we zoom into the plants right here, you see a much yellower tree, whereas on here you kind of see a much more just a tree with uh, light on it. So a little bit of a difference there. Overall with this HDR, I, I struggle to do it. I, I am going to give this uh, part of the HDR a tie because I feel, again, the iPhone does a much better job on the bottom right here with these clouds, and I think the Note does a much better job with this. So HDR changing, making sure you can see the bright and dark of the photo together at the same time, having the greatest range. And overall, it, it is a bit of a toss up. Um, I would say that the Note does have that blue tint that we've heard about sometimes on Samsung phones uh, on the uh, sidewalk. So, or the parking uh, lot. So again, very interesting comparison between the two. But with this one, it really kind of is very simple and easy. So when there was a very close tie between them, I decided to take another version of a shot to get a really contrast. So HDR, one of the biggest ways HDR became popular was because of windows and uh, any kind of out side where you had a bright area that washed out 
uh, either the photo inside or the photo outside. And with these two phones, funny enough, you actually got the primary example of why we got HDR, but neither one did the other thing perfectly. Uh, now here's the thing. What we have in the iPhone, both times, and I, I, and I did tell my brother was taking this photo, I told him tap me and then take the photo so that it focuses on me. And he said he did that twice with the iPhone and I just couldn't believe that because it is clearly focusing for the lighting purpose of the background, not me. But I did see, I did try it with him then in the same kind of photo and he was right. It It is still making sure the lighting is to the background. I even held it down so that the EV and the exposure would be on it. But for some reason, if with this shot, it could not get it. And this is a primary example of what you want HDR to do more so what the note did and that is have me be the focus of it and forget about the bright light behind me yes the light was very bright behind me but the iphone really did make the background clear in terms of lighting instead of making me clear now overall i would have liked to see both be clear but i will have to give this to the note as it does what you want you want the subject that you're tapping and the subject that's in focus to have the better HDR. So for HDR overall, I will give it to the Note just because in both instances, it just seems to do a little bit better in more of the aspects and more of the common aspects that you want for HDR. Love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you wanna argue with me, go for it all day, but that's what I believe. All right, now with the low light. The low lights are pretty much a little bit more cut and dry to be honest. Uh, so the iPhone definitely has the lens flare issue that we got a lot in the Pixel last year. It's one of the reasons why I, th I called BS on DxO Mark for um, the Pixel being the best rated phone last year was because that it had a worse lens flare than either of these two phones. And these two phones uh, do make sure that the lens flare is much more stable. If you take a look at like uh, phones like the Z2 Force, like uh, the OnePlus 5, actually OnePlus 5 did okay, but uh, even the S8 had way more of a lens flare than both of these two phones. That being said, the Note 8 overall does a much better job. You keep the color a lot more accurately uh, to the building, and it's the one that you would post right away without editing. And that's a lot of topics on this. It's, well, is this, which one is better? Which one doesn't need editing? Which one doesn't give you haze? Which one gives you a much better shot? And in this case for low light, it's easily the Note 8, uh, just giving you less lens flare, better coloring, and just a better overall shot, uh, especially with the night, the coloring, and the lens flare. Now this one was a bit more interesting. We took a second low light one just to see, okay, without the lens flare, uh, being an obstacle for the iPhone, can the iPhone do a better shot? Now this one's kind of interesting because the iPhone actually, I feel, takes more light in, but it doesn't look as great because of it. See, the Note actually does a much more dynamic photo having that real deep blue and that real just beautiful looking shot Compared with the iPhone, it looks natural actually more so in this one. And it's because, again, it let more light in as we look at the corner of these photos. You can definitely see more of the railing on here than you can on the note, but it's just kind of hazy. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't give a wow factor because of that. And again, although you can see more, uh, I can't see any shrubbery in here, but I can see a bit more on the iPhone. The photo that you would post, the photo that you're like wowed by, is definitely the Note 8, in my opinion. Again, if you think the iPhone's better, I would love to hear why. You think it's just, oh, if it can do more brightness in better, that's better of a shot, or is it the overall look of the photo? I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts, but in low light, for me, it's clearly the Note 8. Now, although this might seem one-sided, trust me, it, it gets a different turn as we go on, but for the details, Apple has never been that great on details. It's just never been that great. You can look at every past year in comparison, Apple almost always beats color reproduction, which is coming up next, and the Note almost always beats uh, Apple or most other products in detail. 
note just focuses really well. Now this shot we have done plenty of times on the channel and all we do is we tap the uh, PlayStation 3 middle game right in the middle and then take a photo. And then we zoom in really closely and see what is in better focus. Now the curious thing with this uh, two photos, by the way, you're gonna see this one and the next one, the iPhone overexposed on this shot and the Note 8 overexposed on the next shot. So it's kind of interesting how phones control lighting uh, sometimes indoors that, again, depending on what you tap and what you focus on, it's gonna change it. Uh, now for all of these photos, we do take two photos and we pick out the better one so that each phone gets a good shot. Uh, but overall, as we zoom in, uh, the Mortal Kombat right here on the side, definitely more in focus uh, than the iPhone. Same with, uh, especially the Phantom Pain, you can much more uh, easily read it. And then as we go into the Kingdom Hearts section right here, again, a lot more legible. And as we go on, it's just all of these, the Madden right there where we actually, again, was close to where we focused on is much better. And especially the HD 2.5 Remix. Again, just sharper uh, overall on all of these titles. So yeah, it's, it's going to be the Note is just a much better in terms of focusing and taking the photo overall. Um, just a much uh, better way of... Uh, getting your details in your photo and also uh we um not that it was main part of it but even the keyboard uh because of the overexposure it definitely costed the iphone even more so with the actual keys on the keyboard being able to be read so yeah with the details it is going to be the note 8. now when we get to color reproduction now the iphone has one color reproduction in the past couple of years hands down easily but remember what i said at the beginning of this video Apple changed something very interesting, and that is they are no longer going for ultra realistic color. They actually want more vibrant uh, colors. And this is where it really shows, and we're gonna see that in the selfies and in the uh, lens blur as well. And this is where it might be a little bit subjective. Uh, overall, we have our faces on this side of the shot. And interesting enough, I would actually say that this is, again, very telling of the difference. The photos on the right side with the iPhone look like they have more of a tan on each of them, whereas the Note, I would say, does a little bit better job of keeping it how it actually is on the cover. I actually, these were so interesting because I actually had a look at the board game covers to see the lighting differences and see which one matched up better. To be honest, it's about in the middle of where it was but I will give overall a little bit more accuracy. I know the I know the Note 8 is washed out in this photo, but I still will give overall more accuracy to uh, the iPhone on this one. Now, in terms of the whites and the blues, uh, overall on this, I will say the iPhone again did a better job with this section, just as having a better overall darkening and bright. It just, you could see different exposures of white and gray and blue here much more accurately than you can on the iPhone. As when I zoom in with the iPhone, you can see a bigger contrast as with the Note, it's not as big of a contrast. So overall, I will call that one the iPhone. Funny enough though, uh, the iPhone has typically always gotten darker skin tones much more uh, as they realistically are instead of like either giving an orange or a brown tint. And with this one, the Note did a better job actually. The Note did a better job with darker skin tone. It actually is much more accurate. And again, this is where I had to take, I had to go, go in the other room and like, wait a minute, let me look at this. Like which one is more accurate? And this time around, that more punchy color on the iPhone gave it a little bit more hint of orange than is actually there, and it kind of took over. Um, overall though, I will give the color reproduction still to the iPhone, as I do believe it is a better overall representation of, in terms of color reproduction, although it's not a clear cut winner anymore. Now we go to selfies, and selfies has been a very interesting turnaround this time around because Apple is usually, again, uh, although they have never won details for the rear camera, they're almost always the leader in 
details for the front facing camera. Now this is what we call the selfie extreme test for those of you who are new to the channel. And why do we call it that? It's because we have a very dark area on one side that will let you know how the iPhone does with low light selfies. So if you're taking a selfie in low light, this is how it will handle it in extreme conditions. And you have a very bright area that, uh, although not really represented on these two phones, because again, these are the best of the best, you can see it on other phones that we've tried it out on, it overexposes shots. Sometimes you cannot see anything upstairs because that's a very bright light coming down, just like it would be during the daytime. So if you take photos where the sun is behind you, this gives you a good indication of the sun behind you and a club scene or a low light scene. So that being said, let's see how each one did, and then we'll go to the face. Overall, with the right side, the dark side in a low light setting, easily the Note 8, and that's because it just has a wider aperture. It's going to easily be better in low light scenarios to bring in more light and get more detail. And you can clearly see this as the line is a lot blurrier than it is on the Note 8, and just the overall image in the background is obviously going to be um, just not as good comparing to the brightness of the Note 8 is giving us. Now, in terms of this section, it's actually more close because the Note actually, because of the very dark side, has brightened this photo further on the bright side. However, it's actually still a lot more clear, especially when we zoom in to uh, the decorations for Christmas. This is completely blurred in the iPhone, where as you can see some of the stems in the Note 8. Also with the railing, it's more in focus, and even with my wife's uh, dress in this photo, you can see it a bit more, although, again, a little bit more overexposed. So overall, we have that, and overall, again, of course, the Note 8 is a wider shot as the iPhone is a narrower selfie, so you're gonna get much wider shots with the Note 8 for selfie. Now let's look at me, Ashley, the subject. And overall, I think it's a very interesting photo because the Note, again, has brightened this photo more than the iPhone. And I would say I like a little bit more of the shadows with the iPhone. But in terms of clarity this time around, the Note actually does a little bit uh, sharper job. Little bit, I'm not saying dramatically, but even like the lines in my eyes right here, you can see a lot more detail in that than on the iPhone, which typically, again, all the fine tuning airbrush BS is turned off. So you can see a lot more lines in the note than you can in the iPhone this time around. Although again, the iPhone's no slouch. We're just nitpicking here because we have to. Um, overall, they're both good selfies. I actually like the black in my hair, in my beard, and everything in the iPhone more but I would say the Note does an overall better job of a selfie. It's an interesting concept. I, I would say for more selfies, your Note will turn out better because it's better in darker areas and it's better in brighter areas. So for that reason, I would give it to the Note, but because I said earlier, which one would you like to post right away? I would leave it a tie because although I do like the black more in the, uh, in the iPhone, I think the Note has a lot of warrants to it. It depends on what you're looking, and selfies are so subjective. So let me know which one you think won in the selfies. Overall, I will give it a tie because I feel like me in the photo, I did like better on the iPhone, but the overall photo in itself, if I wanted to show where I was and not just myself in a selfie, then it would easily be the note. So let me know what you guys think. And finally, we get the lens blur effect. Now the lens blur is, I feel, still coming out. I mean, although Samsung's had selective focus, which is the same kind of effect of a lens blur, for years, they're only got the dual lens camera this time around to do an instant lens blur. So that being said, it's a very interesting contrast that we see between both of these uh, photos. So first off, we have the blur effect in general. Let's go with that. So first of all, the right side is better on the iPhone than on the Note. As you can see, it has a little bit of trouble right there. But the left side is better on the Note than it is on the iPhone. 
and the top is honestly bad on both. The top of my head uh, kind of like blurs in with the background on both phones. Uh, so neither one I would say is perfect for the lens blur, but again, we go to what do you like and which one would you rather post, right? So first of all, the note is definitely the clearer one between these two. It is definitely more clear details and you could see like specs on my shirt a lot better as we zoom in. You could just see a lot more detail on it than you can on the iPhone. Whereas the iPhone does again that punchy color. Now here's the thing. Although I thank you Apple for giving me a tan, that's not my color. That one is not my color. That is my color. I, I wish I was more tan, but I, I am, you know, even though I'm Latino, I am more, I am more white uh, complexion. So uh, much to my wife's dismay. Uh, but that being said, it really is all about which one would you rather post. And this one I will give a tie to simply for the fact that you have a much better color on the uh, iPhone, but you have a much sharper image overall with the note. Now with the lens blur, both I think sometimes have a great photo and sometimes don't, but you also have to consider what would you rather do? Apple has this new cool thing in beta called the changing uh, the different lighting scenarios, right? So studio lighting, all these kind of things, which are pretty cool. However, with the note, Apple has the ability to turn on and off portrait but with the note, you can actually change the intensity. And that's what's really cool is that you can actually fine tune the intensity a lot more. And overall, I do prefer that feature in it. Now, for me, I don't mind doing an auto adjustment and having the clearer photo. So for me, I would probably go the note, but I feel that most people would actually prefer the iPhone over it in this case scenario because of the coloring and because that is the photo you would prefer to post, even though I wouldn't because I'm not that skin tone. So I, I, I don't mind getting a little tone on me. What you actually see is my is actually what I want you to see because I do get a little bit more uh, uh, coloring uh, when I do this because I have white lights uh, making me even whiter. So I actually do change uh, my how the, my skin tone turns out in this video. But overall, when you take a look at these two, this is a lot more accurate. So it again depends on what you want. And I think we're all kind of uh, interested with our skin tones. Some of us like to have like, oh, this is our ideal one. So I like that I'm more tan in this one, or I like that I am, you know, more uh, either brown or more, uh, you know, have uh, not a yellow hue or anything like that with skin tones. It's a really interesting thing. And I, I've always been interested to, when I take one of someone, they're like, oh, I look to this now and I look to this now and I'm like, okay, let's take another one. But it's always an interesting subject. Let me know what you guys think. Which one do you guys prefer? Again, I think most people would prefer the iPhone one, although I would prefer the Note 8 one in here. So we'll give this one to the iPhone though. So, as we go back to the very beginning, the Note 8 takes HDR. The Note 8 takes low light. The Note 8 takes detail. The iPhone, I, uh, or sorry, no, the iPhone takes color reproduction. The uh, selfie is a tie overall. I just, it's gonna depend on the person. And I will say the iPhone takes this one. So in a three to one ratio, or no, ratio results, we do have the Note 8 overall giving you a better shot. Now again, it does depend on what you're looking for and that's why we brought through all these categories. So if maybe blur effect and color reproduction is the most important thing, you might wanna go with the iPhone. But if you do want to go with low light, HDR, and details, you're probably gonna better be better off with the Note 8. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below and let me know any photos you've taken. If you don't know, we do have a website where we actually have you guys submit your photos and we show them once a month on the photo of the month. So yeah, check out our website for that at youtubetechguy.com. All the links are in the description. Thank you as always for watching. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, why don't you go ahead and subscribe up there. Make sure you follow us on social media right here. And of course, check out our latest video up there. And right down here, you're gonna find the perfect video for you.
or at least that's what YouTube tells me. Thanks again.